On this episode of Industrial Talk, we're talking to Stan Schneider, Real-Time Innovations, or RTI, about autonomy, the technology that is needed to encourage and to facilitate autonomy. You need to listen to this podcast. Let's get going. Welcome to the Industrial Talk Podcast with Scott McKenzie. Scott is a passionate industry professional dedicated to transferring cutting-edge, industry-focused innovations and trends while highlighting the men and women who keep the world moving. So put on your hard hat, grab your work boots, and let's go. All right, let the celebration continue on Industrial Talk. This is where we highlight and celebrate you, industrial professionals all around the world, because you're bold, you're brave, you dare greatly, you innovate like nobody's business, you're solving problems, you're keenly focused on that, and you're making my life and the lives of many around the world. Yeah, you take that to the bank. As mentioned, we are talking to Stan Schneider, CEO of RTI, and uh, we're gonna be talking autonomy, but there's, there's this whole level of innovation that is needed, so let's get cracking. Whether you like it or not, it is here to stay. You better be in the game. You better find your trusted innovation team to give you the, give you the lowdown on what is taking place in industry, what is happening in indust- uh, the, from an innovation and technology perspective, because it is necessary for you to create that business of resilience, that career of resilience. And I, uh, I can't, I mean, the conversations that I have all the time is how do I, how do I, as a company, leverage innovation, leverage technology to help my business be better in the future, whatever it might be, get greater value out of my assets, whatever that is. That conversation happens all the time. And the only way that I can give you guidance on this is you got to find trusted advisors. Trust it, because there's a lot of buzz out there. There's a lot of noise out there on innovation. So Stan, yeah, you can definitely trust that gent, and you can trust the people at RTI. All right couple of things before we get into the conversation that I want you to put on your calendar. All right. We need to get back to normal, right? Whatever that is, whatever that next normal is, let's let's lean on each other to be able to do that. Let's have that uh, you know, that ecosystem of people driving to get back to normal, whatever it might be. I want you to put this event, this wonderful event on your calendar. It is, of course, the IoT Solutions World Congress. And it is May 10th through the 12th. It's in Barcelona. And uh, I've been very fortunate to be there a couple of times. And it is a spectacular event. And it is just, I mean, you're, you're tripping over people who have just mad skills. And it is a great, great venue to collaborate, to network, to get the most and solve problems and find the individuals or find the companies that can definitely answer those questions. Trusted, right? And that's what we're all about. Now, I'm going to also just sort of just encourage you. You need to be a part of the industrial talk ecosystem. What does that mean, Scott? Well, it is, of course, an entertainment platform, but an industrial entertainment platform that brings out the human side of all of these incredible leaders, industrial leaders. But the best part about it is that uh, you get to collaborate and you get to connect with people who are just all bent on solving problems and helping each other achieve whatever success they're trying to achieve. Uh, Over the years, I've had a number of conversations, as you are well aware, and the conversations always, always, it's never really the technology. It's always the human side. Who can I work with? Who can I collaborate? Who can I trust with? Who can I do? Who can I? Who can I? Those are always the questions, always the topic, because everybody, everybody wants their business to succeed, their career to succeed. Who do I collaborate with to make sure that that happens? So I'm going to challenge you on these conferences. There's a ton out there. You, man, you go out to this uh, website called 10time.com. 
10 times S, put an S on that. And uh, you, you'll see all of the events around the world. Incredible website, by the way. And uh, But the reality is, is that what are we doing? What are we doing to get the most out of these events for your company, for solving problems? And I'm going to just share with you how we approach these conferences, outside of the fact that we broadcast. Yes, one. And that is just a great way of being able to get the attention that you so desire and deserve, right? So we broadcast live at these events. It's fun. It is nothing short of fun. And then we create this video, and the video is fun. And it highlights all of the wonderful things that are happening at the event and the energy. And it just is a great Great combination, one-two punch on how to get that attention you just so deserve. But the reality is, is that gone are the days that we just go to a conference, drink great bourbon, and eat great food, and and uh, yuck it up with uh, many people. It could still happen, but I think we have to be far more pinpoint focused on why are we there. How does it impact our bottom line? What is the return on our efforts, right? And so you have to think, think in a way of being able to say, okay, I'm going to IoT Solutions World Congress. There's a pre, pre-activity, right? Pre. And then there's during, and then there's post. I, I break it up in those areas. If the pre-activity includes, I, I, need, I need a schedule, schedule, firm, connections with my existing customers and my uh, quality or whatever quality connections, I'm going to do that. And that requires a lot of pre-work, a lot of work up front. Because when you get to that location, when you get to that site, when you get to the event, you're ready to go. You're ready to roll. You're ready to have that conversation on how your solution, your focus, your, your whatever it is can help solve problems. And then you fill it up. And then you just keep, because the reality is, we could go out to LinkedIn and say, okay, I'm just going to try to find some quality leads out there. And it's the cost. But the reality at these events, these events that bring everybody together, they're all there. Face to face. Human interaction is key. Get the most out of it. Okay. So you go to the event. You're on a podcast. You're talking about the subject matter you're talking about. You've already done your pre-work. You're out there now. You're, you're doing your stuff right there. You're broadcasting. It's great. You're getting a value-added you know, asset right there and then. And then the real, the real rubber is, is that you follow up. You nurture. You have to keep at it. You gotta, you've got to continue to nurture the relationships. Listen to what is being said. What are the problems that are being communicated? How does your solution, listen, how your solution can solve problems and be able to have that conversation. But the best part and the most important part is that you're, dest you're focused on that individual's success, right? It's keenly focused. I want that individual, that company to succeed. To do that too, you've got to open doors for that uh, customer too. It's not only just saying, hey, we got a great solution. Here it is. It's wonderful. And it could be that, right? But I want a relationship, and I know many want a relationship that go beyond that. It's like, hey, I hear what you have to say. I know our solution is good, but I'm destined and focused on your success. And therefore, therefore, I'm going to introduce you to this particular individual. And you make that in, uh, introduction. You're part of the solution. Talk about goodwill. Talk about the way to collaborate. And I'm telling you right now, Trusted individuals, important. Solutions, innovation, important. But the reality is you don't have all the answers, and that means you need to collaborate. And the more you collaborate, the more you have that conversation, you will succeed. And you have to succeed because you're that important. You are. You're just that important. All right, let's get on with Stan Schneider. So I was very fortunate to be able to interview uh, Stan at IoT Solutions World Con Congress in uh, Barcelona. Great guy. And you'll quickly recognize that he's uh, definitely smarter than me. He is, uh, he, he's got a, a, a real sense of honesty and a desire to truly 
solve problems. So as we start talking about trusted people, Stan is one of them. And if you're looking and if you're trying to say, okay, autonomy is an important component to my business, and I can't send this data to the cloud. I need something that is right there so that there's there's quick quick response. Like, let's put it this way. Automobiles, yes, you need quick response. Stan knows all that. His team, RTI, knows all that. And I think that you need to reach out. Schneider, CEO, Real-Time Innovations. They just go by RTI. That's the website. So enjoy the conversation with Stan. Stan, welcome to Industrial Talk. Thank you very much for finding time in your busy schedule and to talk to the best, and I mean the best, and the well-educated listeners that industry has on Industrial Talk. How are you doing there, Stan? Great. The last time we spoke, it was in Barcelona. And again, I think I shared with you prior to this conversation that I can't even remember that. I feel like I had hair at that, that time. <laughs> well, it, it's yeah. I'm so glad that you said yes. And, you, and, and the reason we're doing this is, one, absolutely want to know what's, what's happening at RTI, what's happening with Stan and what's all of that. That's all important. And also, we need to talk about getting our life back in order and whatever that looks like from the IoT Solutions World Congress. Before we get all into that, give us a little background, Stan, on who you are. Hi, I'm Stan Schneider. I run a company called Real-Time Innovations, RTI. We are a software framework provider uh, for autonomy. We're the largest in the market by a pretty good margin. We build a software that allows you to put together intelligent distributed systems outside of the cloud. So people think AI is everywhere. It's really not. It's mostly in the cloud, and we are trying to enable the real world to be more intelligent by taking um, those smarts and letting them run outside the cloud. So, so I don't have to go to the cloud with your, with your solution. No, we do things like, you know, we call it autonomy. Everybody says you say autonomy, everybody thinks vehicles. And we are in 250 autonomous vehicle designs of an amazing variety of things. Uh, but we're ah, also, I got to ask the question. Is it really going to happen? Will will the future just have autonomous vehicles where I can just jump in, get a, on a on an autonomous vehicle, or my car will be autonomous? It, will that ever happen? I mean, really? Uh, well, sure. Autonomous vehicles are everywhere now. You probably don't realize that, but you know, we started out doing flying things. Lots of autonomous flying things out yeah. there. It's a much easier problem. But jumping in. Yes. Car and drive. Yeah, as soon as you get the the uh, you know bio prejudice out of your head that people are better drivers than computers are, you can do that. Um, I started my career crashing cars for a living. Something did you really? Know. I did. Yeah, the University of Michigan. I was a biomechanics impact oh, wow. uh, researcher. Um, You're the first one. Know. Just FYI, I, I don't know many. You're the first one. Congratulations. Wow, yeah. A certificate. Well, I was, I was very excited about that. It was a long time ago. But, you know, back then we were working on things like, uh, you know, smarter airbags, multi stage airbags, and side impact protection systems, and crumple zones, and crushable steering columns, and child seats, and wheelchair restraints, and on and on and on. Um, we have all of those things now and more, along with you know stuff like any block brakes and electronic stability control and any drug driving laws. And back when I was there, I was all excited because 45,000 people a year in the U.S. were dying in car crashes. Um, See, that's pretty cool. We take it for granted now, right? We just do. Yeah. We, we, well, we just... the sad part is that today... I don't mean pre-pandemic, I suppose. There were still 40,000 dying a year in car crashes. So from a safety perspective, you know, we're driving more miles, so it's better per mile. But, you know, we couldn't even run tests more than 35 miles an hour. It's just too much energy above that. And I don't believe you can ever make cars safe without fixing the number one safety problem in cars, which is you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, maybe pre-pandemic, but post pan or right now during pandemic, I never drive. So yeah, I yeah. Well, super the safe. Has sort of changed a lot of things, but I, I do think that you know, at least from a statistical point of view, 
autonomous yeah. vehicles in many locate many, many environments will be better than non-autonomous vehicles very soon. And yeah. it's uh, you know the 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 computers will make mistakes you would never make. You know they'll they'll some of the famous ones will mistake a a truck for a sign they can go under or something like that. Um, but you make mistakes the computer would never make and falling asleep and yeah. driving yeah. drunk and. Personally, uh, I think it's going to happen. That, you know, everybody, everybody's done that. They shouldn't do that. And it's just, you know, yeah. So I do think there will be a time when in a place, you know, it's not going to be everywhere immediately, uh, but the autonomous vehicles are coming and they will be safer. Uh, See, I'm, I'm all into it. And, and, and I'm, I'm very bullish on it. I think it, it is definitely going to happen. Yeah. It, it, it seems sort of, you know, Logan's runish, I guess, future. But the reality is, is people, smart people like you are making it happen and thinking through it. And it, it just gets better. And so my goal, my, my hope is that all I have to do is jump in. I don't have to drive and I'm safer and I have to deal with traffic either. I could just sort of sit back and, you know, hang out. All right. Let's talk a little bit about IOT in our conversation prior to this uh, conversation. I, I thought this was absolutely brilliant. And, and, and listeners, agree or disagree, don't send me a text. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> IoT, <laughs> IoT is poorly defined. And I, I agree with you 100% on that one because it's it's like the miscellaneous file, right? It's yeah. Like, it's like it's worse the than Internet that. of Things. And it's like right. things. And, and give us a – why do you say that? Well – Everything by definition is a thing. That's what everything, <laughs> everything. means. Everything. <laughs> so, Internet of Things doesn't really mean much of anything except that everything has a computer in it and everything is connected. And it's awful hard to name anything that won't have a computer in it and be connected in just a very few years, 20, 30 years out there. I mean, computers are increasing in performance and decreasing in cost of this stunning rate. Uh, I went to the University of Michigan. I remember going to the football games and it'd be a stadium with 100,000 people in it. 100,000 people. And you just feel like this little thing, right, with this huge press of intelligence around you and humanity. Well, computers increase in performance 100,000 times every 25 years. So where I was a little thing in that stadium, imagine that entire stadium is available for the computing I have today, in 25 years from now, we'll have 100,000 stadiums, a factor of 10 billion. No, yeah. actually more than 10 billion. 10 billion in 40 years. So it's 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 more than that in 50 years. But but, but it's it's even even that time billion. frame. It's compressing even faster. There's a, it's there's a velocity out there. By the way, that's bucket list stuff for me. I want to go up to Ann Arbor. I want to be in that uh, stadium <laughs> just just to see it because it's. It's perfectly shaped. It's like it's a perfect bowl. I like it. All right. Yeah, it's, I it's digress. A great <laughs> but you know, ten billion X in fifty years. It's just it's it's hard to understand that. It really is the only thing that matters. You're building a system that has to last for the next 30, 50 years, even 20 years. It really is the only thing you should be thinking of. It's the only factor that matters is how do you take advantage of intelligence, which yeah, people don't. True. People don't get today, uh, but I do think the IoT is is really pretty much divided into three huge, I call them spheres, buckets, whatever you want to call them. There's uh, the device monitoring bucket, which is most of the consumer world and a lot of the industrial world too, where you have a device and it talks to a single cloud service. There may be lots of devices, but it just you know, one cloud service. And so, you know, think like your Nest thermostats or your um, Fitbits. Um, right there, baby. <laughs> right, exactly. It's connected to a single cloud service and it can monitor it, can control things. In the industrial space, you'll hear about, uh, you know, uh, predictive maintenance and things like that, where it's monitoring a device. Um, that's one class. Another class, it's probably the biggest class, by the way, because it's sort of the easiest in a lot of ways. The other class is uh, optimization, intelligent optimization, where you sensorize a factory or a pipeline and you collect a whole bunch of data and you get it up to the cloud and you think about it and you use that to optimize the system, typically not very real time. 
may even only optimize it once a month. You're going to change how you manufacture something or what you manufacture based on the market or something. Um, huge class. A lot of the big platforms out there. Isn't it, hold it. Before I forget, isn't there an overlap between the device and then the uh, Intel optimization? You need a bunch of devices to create that intelligent operations, right? Yeah, but it's not, I don't know of any, maybe a strong statement. Of course, there's overlap of everything. It's an internet of everything, right? Things. Um, we're, we're talking <laughs> things. things. More things. But I don't know of very many device monitoring things that are also integrated in where they're trying to control and activate devices that's integrated uh, in with a big data collection AI for more than many, many different types of devices. Maybe there are. It's, I'm sure there are, actually, take that back. It's not, it's not a huge thing. It's not really my world anyway. My world, we live in the edutonomy world, third big sphere, where instead of having the intelligence in the cloud, the cloud might be a player, but the real intelligence needs to be in the edge in the field where it's running a car or a medical robot or a power system or a defense system, a radar or something. You have to have high performance, high reliability. You could never really count on. I would never, you know, safety research, I would never delegate my safety to anything off vehicle. It's just it's too many, too many failure modes. So, so, so the edge yeah. as a whole is, is, there's a <clears throat> there's a speed, right? So I have everything sort of there at the site, right? If if I sent that information to the cloud, there's a there's a latency. Is that is that the benefit of this? That's a benefit. Reliability is probably a bigger benefit. Um, the ability to handle lots of high performance connectivity is another benefit. You know, you just, it, it, it depends on the application you're trying to do, but the real, the real benefits to having intelligence there with you is you can make sure it's always available, make sure it's always fast, make sure it's connected in the right way. You know, we sell a connectivity technology um, it's, it's data centric and I can explain that if you want. But. Yeah, I do because, well, you're just, you're just full of, uh, interesting jargon that I have no idea what you're talking about. Right. Well, I mean, I, I mean, trying to make it as simple as possible yep. in the intelligence world, data is everything, right? So data in the cloud is the reason Facebook and Google have such a good map of you is they got lots of data about you. Um, and, you know, data is everything. Everybody, everybody sort of gets that today. Uh, but in the cloud, you have, you know, to make a model of you at Facebook, I've got days, months, years, decades to figure out stuff about you and connectivity between you. Um, if you want to make a data-centric model of an intelligent vehicle that's moving, the world changes every millisecond or every several milliseconds oh. anyway. And so you have to... It becomes not about the data itself, but about the data flow, getting the right data to the right place at the right time. Right place might be a, an AI you know, or an intelligent algorithm that has to have enough data about its surroundings to make decisions. And those decisions happen to have to happen in 20 milliseconds, not 20 weeks. <clears throat> and so it, it's the same concept as, a, as the data centric cloud world. Um, it's just now really more about data flow than it is about the data itself. You have to get the right data. That's is essentially it, is what we it, provide. It, can I say that there are different avenues of data? Like sometimes data could go into the cloud because I don't need it right now. I mean, it goes up there. It's fine. As a, but And then there are, there's data that has to reside on premise or in the edge or whatever so that mm -hmm. I – I have the necessity to, be, or have the capability of accessing it, or it delivers insights rapidly. Are there mo are there avenues like that? Not everything yeah. needs to be at the edge. No, it's definitely there's there's always layers. Uh, like there's an architecture called the layered data bus, which is a good example of that, where you have there you go something inside the vehicle, it's a car. People people get cars more than other things, even though it's only a small part of the opportunity out there. Um, 
<laughs> but, you know, cars has LIDARs and radars and video and intelligence and other kinds of sensors and actuators that it has to run. And that that environment has a very high speed data flow requirements to get the right information to the right intelligence at the right time so it can make decisions. You know, if you're if you're not in the car, if you're some control center or something that's monitoring 50,000 cars, you might want to know things that are derived from that car, like where the cars are, how fast they're moving, whether they have people in them or not, whether they have some maintenance problem, if there's somebody stuck. You know, what do you do if you have an autonomous vehicle that's, that's stuck in a construction zone? Um, you can't really drive anybody there. I'm actually on the board of an organization called the Teleoperations Consortium. Not that I think you can delegate safety to a remote operator. You can certainly delegate getting unstuck to a remote operator. Um, and that yes. you know, is another layer of different kinds of data. They don't necessarily need direct access to the LiDAR cloud, but they may well need direct access to the video to see what's going on. Uh, and then there's you know another layer even above that where you're going to optimize the use of your vehicles and decide whether you're going to deploy them all to northeastern Phoenix or you know even take some out of that market or what kind of vehicles might be more effective or who pays the most money and the sort of kind of things you do in the cloud today, which is really becoming more of an optimization, intelligent optimization problem. So those things are are all mixed together. How did <laughs> All oh, great. This is what, you know, you've just started, you chirped a lot happening in that little segment. You chirp connectivity, this, that, do this, but I don't even know where to start. And I can tell you where to start. Talk to me. Start with the data. Start Most with people the data. start with the systems and then yes. tell you, what data do I need out of this system? See, that's what important. data is coming out of the LIDAR? What data is coming out of the operators or whatever? And they try to build a system, a, a design around the system as components. Um, See, I so like that. Object-oriented designs that are really designing around objects, which are almost always mapped to physical things. If you instead just turn it all around, it's a complete, I have a great slide where I show an upside down picture of a, a lake in a forest. Look, at it, nice reflection. It looks okay, but there's something wrong. You flip it over and everything sort of changed. If you just think about what data do I have, what data do I need, it's why it's called data centric. You start with the data and then you can build the, the components around that data. Everything gets very much easier to deal with. See, sounds, I like that. I like that. It's approach. much harder than you think to actually do that. But <laughs> yeah, because if, if I saw it, you know, this big old cauldron of data, right? And it's swimming around. I even have a hard time figuring out that, is that data, do I want that one, that one, that one? Does that bring, right. and that requires some skilled eyeballs. It's not right. my eyeballs, it's somebody else's eyeballs. But it, to do that, I like the fact that if you have the data, and if, if that data allows you to be a better, you know, make better decisions, then yeah, you would, right. and then, and if that's the case, then yeah, okay, let's design something around that. And, right. and so my, go ahead. My, my favorite architecture diagram has exactly two boxes. It has, <laughs> it has the application, whatever it is you're doing. Yeah. And that, you know, it, it, at almost any level. And then inside that, there's another box that says data. And what data centricity does is logically makes it look like all the data in the entire system. This could be this 50,000 vehicle cars and all their LIDARs and all of their, you know, speeds and motor currents or whatever are all logically available to any application that asks for it um, with the right call quality of service, like delivery requirements, the security and all that kind of thing. Um, it makes it way easier to write applications and way easier to do things like make a mobile. If the, if the application can just request its data and I need it, you know, maybe I need it with a hundred milliseconds delay. That's the latency you're talking about. Um, and then I've got, I know how big it is and I know all the kind of thing. If I can meet that spec, I can be on the vehicle. I can be in some controller on the vehicle. I can be in the cloud. I can have the vehicle drive around and change networks. It doesn't matter because my application is only dependent on the data. It just makes it way simpler design 
it's a it's a definitely a leap of faith in your thinking as a designer to think about the data first because it for most people it's it's, the, it's the and, and there's thought. there's a lot of companies out there that have been collecting data they just have data data i've got data and then have, they they deployed these systems but they really do not take advantage of the the data for a point of clarification right. stan you mentioned it a couple of times for some of the individuals that don't know. Can you define LIDAR? What does that mean? LIDAR is basically laser ranging. LIDAR shines a laser, usually scans. So think of it doing that, and it's it's measuring how far away each of those scan points are. So just like your old-fashioned CRT monitor would scan the screen and draw a picture, it's doing almost the inverse. It's scanning an environment and giving you 3D distances to everything in the environment. And these things can be pretty fast and they can be very accurate. Um, But, of course, you pay money for both of those features. (laughs) You can have cheap ones that just do one line, basically. (laughs) It'll give you some idea. Um, but everything else is it, the, the price is coming down, right? Yeah, I mean, you see them spinning it. around the, the mechanical ones spinning around on the top of vehicles, those are relatively high end ones that are may have a lot of ability to get a lot of lines and they, they get a new update every time they spin around. There's some fancier ones that are all solid state that use phased arrays and things like that to change where the light where the laser's scanning. Um, it's cheaper. It's not as accurate. It can be faster. Someday it'll be fast and cheap. Faster, better, be. cheaper, right? Choose any two. <laughs> it is, but it, but but it, it's going to happen. And I, I agree with you 100 yeah. percent on that one. It, it just is because there are smart people like you and others that are that are, are going to make that happen. And and I mean, the future is bold from my perspective. I I, I wish I was younger, just because. But you've been doing it for. Uh, Look at that! Your stack guard out there, seventeen years. You've been yeah. you've been leading the way for a long time. I mean, you've been seen... in the data centric world since two thousand six. Yeah. So yeah, it's 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 been a while. It's a it's an exciting space right now. It's just amazing it is. what's going on. It is. We see it everywhere. In yeah, it is. And medical and you know, we run I'm reading some this, systems. I'm reading this book, and this talks about. Uh, uh, technology convergence. I don't have it in front of me, so I'm not going to spout the the title of it. But it's it's that convergence, and then people like you can see other technologies that that are going out there, and you're saying, "Hey, I could use that. That helped me here." And then and, and you put it all together, and and it just creates a more um, a, I don't know a, a better solution going forward. It, it's yeah. it's really an I, interesting I, time. I, I mean, we sell integration technology, so I'm 100 percent behind integration is the hard part, but I find that yeah. there's a bigger blocker out there, and that bigger blocker is just flat out confusion. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, and I'm the president of that fan club because I right. I try, but it's you're right. There, there's a lot of confusion out there, but <laughs> we have I mean, there's an alphabet to work connectivity space. There's an alphabet soup connectivity technologies out God. there. And everybody, they all use the same kind of words. They send data, they have latency, they have throughput, they have, and, and, and in reality, they're just completely different. They're as different as trains are from tennis shoes. Yes, they're both transportation technologies, <laughs> but you can't interchange them. And so we actually have a, we have an online tool. If I can, a, a quick yeah. plug. just go connectivity.rti.com and you can answer a bunch of questions and it'll, it'll tell you at least which standards are somewhat appropriate to your world. See, that's cool. Um, and we mostly did that originally to stop people from calling us with problems we can't solve. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so let's create a tool and then, uh, yeah, we can solve that. Now we can. Yeah. Well, we want to talk to the people that would fit. I, I can ask you five questions and tell you if you're going to buy our product. And, and there's simple things. Like have you said the word millisecond in the last two weeks? Um, <laughs> do, you have, <laughs> do you have more than 10 programmers? They aren't like, you know, give me your design specs. They're just, very simple things that you can ask people to find out if you're even in the right galaxy. See, um, I, I think that there's a necessity, and, and I like the simplicity of that approach. I, I think that there, there, 
there tends to be a, a greater amount of complexity that doesn't need to be there, which then creates greater confusion. So if there's any way of being able to simplify that message, I'm all in because yeah. I guarantee you the majority of people, well, uh, let's put it that way. I'm, I'm definitely not a target market, but I, yeah. I, I like well, this. You're looking at concave, we have a nice little online tool. The IIC did a great piece of work called the Industrial Connectivity Framework that has all these, it's like, I don't know, 130 dense pages of PDF. I would not expect most people to read, but we sort of distilled that down in just a few questions that direct people where to go if they're looking at MQTT or Kafka or DDS or whatever. See, that's a must. Go out to RT. It's all automated. And we're not trying to sell anything. We're actually trying to direct people to go to the right way so we don't deal with the ones that are going the wrong way. It's expensive. You mentioned iiconsortium.org or in industry iot consortium there's a there's a new rebranding out there and i'm yeah. I'm, I'm i'm stumbling with the new branding of it it's uh, in industry iot consortium right. that's a mouthful but they got a lot of smart well, people out there too founded or co-founded the iot solutions world congress look at you segwagon if this whole rti thing doesn't work out you've got a uh, uh, a great and beautiful future in uh, podcasting there stan <laughs> so tell tell us why tell us why IoT Solutions World Congress. I wouldn't is want important. to compete with you. That's a disaster. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, there you go. Disaster. Don't compete with me. Let me ask you this. Tell, why tell is, us why what? <laughs> why why is IoT Solutions World Congress important to you? Um. Well, it's been evolving with everything else this year's. Plan I, I love. They're reorganizing around technology. <laughs> yes. Classes instead of other things they've tried in the past. Uh, I think that's really useful. It's, you know, uh, our my company sells into a, a dozen verticals. So organizing about vertical doesn't help us at all. Um, but we sell a very narrow value proposition, right? We sell only the people that answer our five questions. <laughs> And Clearly. <laughs> Clearly. It's way easier if you're going there to get an idea of the components, you know, connectivity and security. And they're but they're they're all almost obviously somewhat related. You can't have connectivity without security, for instance. Yeah. But it's so much easier to understand the thing. I remember the number one blocker out there is confusion. If you've divided it up into sort of the component technologies people get it better that way and there's companies like you know we have a security solution too but we we would be in the connectivity section because that's really we have security that works with our connectivity yeah. not connectivity that you know, we don't sell a security solution we just have one that goes with our stuff which is more common um yeah see it's interesting and and you bring up a good point there one there are companies out there that are reluctant to truly, you know, we do, we make our things this way. This is how we have been doing it forever. And that's, that's that sort of legacy uh, mindset. And that's fine. I, I believe that if you are a company that has a desire to be in, successful in the future, your journey, your strategy, your strategic thinking has to include all of this this wonderful innovation, such as what RTI does. The other area that I think is necessary, if you say that is a fact, that is a reality, you got to participate, then events like IoT Solutions World Congress and the people that go there is a great resource to start learning and begin your journey and to find trusted people like Stan. How's that? Mm -hmm. did, I, did I nail it, Stan? Yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> For you, you know. We'll <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> Bringing my B game today there, Stan. B game. Not my A game. No, it's B definitely game. a, you know, in general, most people go to things like this to understand the world. Um, confusion is the biggest blocker. The confused mind says no. And, you know, yeah, it's, that's it's, a good it's a big risk. I mean, our, our average customer is probably spending a couple hundred million dollars building this new intelligent system and obviously some of them the, you know the famous ones like the ev uh 
autonomous vehicles or just vehicle design. They're spending multiple billions of dollars in a decade. And to go into that without understanding what's going on is, you know, is not going to happen. So it's, it's a good place to go and see how others work. And, you know, some people are afraid, well, it's all vendors. Well, the vendors know what they're doing. I hate to say it, but we've, we've failed. We've got 2000 applications out there. We've failed hundreds of times in that. Right. And we've learned a lot and we definitely have some ways to help people think about their problems. It's different. All right. We got to wrap it up. How does somebody get a hold of Stan and RTI and why that's important outside of the fact that if you're contemplating this, I think you need to at least go to it's RTI.com, right? RTI.com. Easiest URL there is out there. It um, is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can remember it. <laughs> I can tell you a whole story around that one. But, yeah. Um, yeah, go to RTI.com. You can learn all about the company. If you want to connect with me, the best way is on LinkedIn. Just go to LinkedIn look for Stan Schneider. There's a lot of Stan Schneiders in the world, unfortunately. But yeah, they're, they're, they're one of them anywhere close to this space. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, act, you know, listeners, go to Stan Schneider. Put a little comma in there. Uh, RTI. You'll see it. Go T. Greenery on his header. Quote. You. you yeah. That. That's the stand. Reach yeah, out I have, to stand a, I have a sort of unique LinkedIn page. It's all a bunch of stories. So yeah. if, you like, if you like stories, you can go there and read about why we did the company. And no, know, it's cool. See, <laughs> look at that. Why I left my uh, my Stanford academic career. This is getting ready. I said you got a little PhD at Stanford. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have a PhD from Stanford, and I left. I left the academia because. Essentially, I figured out 95% of academicians are working on problems that simply don't exist, um, which, I mean, that's not a dig at research because that other 5% changes the world. But if you're in research, you've got about a 95% chance of doing nothing useful. <laughs> See, that's <laughs> a, a whole thing. other conversation. That would frustrate the hell out of me. Yeah, it's, it's frustrating. In a company, if you do nothing useful... You fail, and you get to go do something else. Yeah. In university, no, you can claim you're leading for decades and actually not be having any followers. That's a whole <laughs> other conversation. It's like digging a ditch and filling it back in. All right, you're going to get that. me in trouble with my academic friend. Ah, nothing against it. Nothing that, against it at all. It's just it's a tough game. Yeah, uh, yeah. You'll, you'll, it is. So uh, is running a company, to be fair. But. Uh, to be fair, I agree with you 100%. I've, I've been there, done that, and uh, yes, uh, d don't don't be squiffy about running a company. You've got a that's a that's a whole nother conversation. Did you say the word squiffy? I did say squiffy. <laughs> you, know, you want to put it out on a bumper sticker? You could say squiffy. Where do I? Where is do that I a new that? word? No, 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 no. It's uh, squiffy is a word. Squ squ no, you you get you get it. It's like a little it's squiffy. And I can't believe it. Uh, I, I got that from a movie, and I can't remember where. But they oh, you, you said Squiffy. So I said, so I'm Squiffy. Urban and, and, Dictionary. <laughs> wow. Is it? Yeah, hardworking, fast-paced, enthusiastic person who works in a restaurant or bar. That's Squiffy. a Squiffy. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Stan, thank you very much for being on Industrial Talk and saying yes You're to being here. You taught me something today. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, squiffy. <laughs> Run away. Have a good time on that one. All right. Thank you, Stan, for thank being on. Thank you. It was a great All right. time. All right. They're not. Uh, if you do end up uh, traveling anywhere, let me know. I'll, I'll hang out with you. Yeah, heck yeah, man. See? See? High beer factor with uh, Stan. You want to hang out with him. You want to have a beer with him. That's a thing. <laughs> beer factor high. All right. We're going to wrap it up on the other side. Do not go away. We will be right back. You're listening to the Industrial Talk Podcast Network. All right. That's Stan. Absolutely incredible conversation. Team RTI. They are focused on your success and you definitely can trust them. Reach out. Go out to uh, Stan Schneider's stat card out on LinkedIn. Reach out. Connect. You're not going to be disappointed. All right. Again, let's get to this next normal, whatever it is. That means going to these events. IoT Solutions World Congress, May 10th through the 12th. Go out to 
their website, find out more. Again, that is a great, a great event to put on your calendar because they're all there. Yeah, I'm just laying it low. Be a part. Be a part of the industrial talk ecosystem. We're just focused on entertaining, bringing out that human element, and definitely solving problems and being able to collaborate with a bunch of people from around the world. You need to be a part of it. It's easy. Go to industrialtalk.com. Find out more. I'll tell you, it's a lot of fun. Be bold, be brave. Dare greatly. Hang out with people who are bold, brave, and dare greatly. Like Stan, you're going to change the world. We're going to have another great conversation. Sure.